On behalf of the Congregation of First Congregational United Church of Christ in Great Falls, Montana, uh, we welcome you. If you are visiting with us today, I hope you'll take some time after the service to visit our website. Uh, there it is this time. Uh, greatfallsucc.org. We're also on, on Facebook. Uh, so we hope you'll take some time to visit that and, and walk around there for a little bit. We also have a YouTube channel where you can view past week's worship services as well as our Sunday school videos. So be sure and, and check out the Sunday school videos. Now, if you haven't already, I invite you to settle into a comfortable place. If you're inclined to set a worship center, you might consider using a white cloth of some kind a candle. I've got my worship center set up back here. It's got the Bible open to Luke chapter 24 and a pair of sandals or shoes. I've also got placed on, on ours the elements for communion, some bread and some juice. And I invite you at this time, uh, if you have a candle, to go ahead and light that candle. As we enter into this sacred place and time, May we put away the pressures of the world that ask us to perform, to take up masks, to put on brave fronts, silence the voices that ask us to be perfect. May we find a spirit of compassion and welcome. May we bring all that we are and all that we yet can be to this safe and holy place. Tyler. As we move deeper into our worship experience, we are invited into some responsive words of proclamation 
Um, for those of us from First Congregational UCC in Great Falls, if you have your church newsletter nearby, these words are included in this week's worship at home materials. So you might wanna grab that and follow along. Feel free to read out loud with Tom and me or simply follow the words in silence, but remember to keep your device muted. Otherwise it does get kind of confusing. So Tom. Good morning. Where shattered hearts are made whole, <clears throat> where wounded souls are healed, where life is stronger than death. There the stone has been rolled away. Where the lonely become our friends, where a stranger is welcomed home, where hope is stronger than despair. There we find Jesus walking. Where closed wallets are opened, where the anxious find serenity, where love is stronger than hate. There, Jesus is opening our eyes. The stone has been rolled away. Jesus is our companion on the journey. Our eyes are opened. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is with us. You'll join me in prayer. Living Jesus, heavenly stranger, our companion on the way, walking with the disciples down grief's lonely road, you sang of how God had raised you from the dead so that listening, they might believe. Believing, they might understand. Understanding, they might obey. Going forth to invite all to follow you, to feast on your love forever, reaching out your love to us so we would touch others, filling us with your gifts so we could be a blessing to the world, piercing our darkness with hope so we might bring healing to the broken and raise us to new life. Amen. Today's worship takes us on a journey, something that may feel a bit foreign to us right now because of the restrictions that we've been under as a way to keep ourselves and one another safe. But we all know that not all journeys are physical. Life is a journey. Faith is a journey. Love is a journey. Even living into being church is a journey. It is never locked into any one place or any certain time. This past week, I invited members of our congregation to share pictures of your feet. And many of you did, thank you. I've loved getting them, uh, seeing part of you that we don't often see even when we are together in the same room, but particularly in this time when it seems like the interactions we have with people are basically headshots on a screen. So you're going to be seeing some of those images of people's feet throughout the service in the songs that will be presented by Daryl and Cindy. Um, so my hope is, is that as you see one another's feet, they will be a reminder that wherever those feet stand, because we are all created in the image of God from the top of our heads to the end of our toes. And whether we are gathered or scattered, we proclaim that God is with us. And that means that the ground upon which we stand is holy. The song that Daryl and Cindy are going to sing calls us to gather at the river. So let us do that, not physically, but in our hearts and in our minds, because we are where we are staying, where we need to stay to be safe and well. And um, I'm gonna have Daryl and Cindy hang on just a second because I'm gonna switch the screen to get us to the words. Go ahead. Shall we gather at the river where bright angel feet 
feet have trod with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints by the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. As we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide our robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Thank you, Cindy and Daryl. Our scripture today comes from Luke 24, <clears throat> verses 13 through 35. Now on that same day, the day that the women found the tomb empty, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood, stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. 
As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us? while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. These are the words of the teachings of Jesus as recorded by Luke. Good morning. I wanted to do this morning's message outside. Um, it's such a beautiful spring weekend here in Great Falls, Montana. And since we have been indoors for so long, since we are not able to worship inside our regular worship space, why not, why not take it outside? And besides, the story that we're exploring today is the story about a journey along a road. I've always envisioned, envisioned it to be kind of a, a country road, a road where two disciples left Jerusalem on the day of resurrection, probably a little bit perplexed and a little bit confused and maybe even a little bit frightened. And they were traveling to, to a town not too far away from Jerusalem. Tom read the story for us um, this morning, so I won't go back into it anymore, but I'm always struck with how this story often resembles the faith journey of, of many of us. For me in particular, I've, I've often found that my, my journey in faith is one that is more like the road to Emmaus than the road to Damascus that Paul experienced because I often have experiences in life and faith that I'm not really sure what their impact is until I've had the opportunity to go back and sit down and reflect and then realize, wow, I recognize the presence of something holy and divine while that was going on. And so, so this story about the disciples going to Emmaus and encountering the risen Jesus is a really important and powerful one for me. This is also a story about disruption. Uh, the disciples have been disrupted from their normal lives. The crucifixion of Jesus disrupted them and the resurrection disrupted them as well. I'm sure that they were in a place where they really did not know what was going on and maybe that was their reason for leaving Jerusalem. Maybe they feared for their life Maybe they were headed home. We don't know which disciples this, these were. And so maybe they were trying to find some place familiar and safe. But they encountered something and someone along the way. The text doesn't tell us why or how, but it tells us that they were prevented from recognizing who Jesus was. And he asked them a question, what were you talking about as you walked along? And they stopped and their eyes were downcast. They were obviously sad, distraught, maybe thinking about what it is that they, that they should say. Gets me to wondering, as we are on our own journeys in life and during this time of uncertainty, what is it that might be preventing us? from recognizing the risen Christ that comes into our midst? Is it, is it our own fear of what could happen? Is it, is it our grief that keeps us from, from recognizing new life in our midst? Is it our worry about the future? Is it anger? Does our political leanings get in the way of recognizing new life that comes into our midst? Do our disagreements with our neighbors and our family and our friends put up a barrier from us recognizing where opportunities for reconciliation 
might happen. We don't know what it was that kept the disciples from recognizing the risen Christ, and maybe they explored that later on. We, we don't know. That was not kept in the story. But I think it's an important thing that we can do in our own stories to be thinking about what is it that might keep us from recognizing the risen Christ in, in our midst. I loved that in the story as they, as they went on, when they got to the place where they were going, they, they invited this stranger to stay with them. And how crucial is that? How crucial is that when we are in the presence of someone that, that stirs us in important ways, that we invite that presence to stay with us, to linger a little bit longer with that presence? I kind of like to think that maybe just their, their interaction with this stranger um, kind of stirred some faith within them, that they saw a glimmer of something in there. Well, we all know how the story continues, and, and as they sat down for dinner, when, when Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it, their eyes were open, and they were able to see that it was indeed Jesus in their midst. But then he disappeared from them. He, he did not linger. He did not stay in the way that we might think. I kind of like to think that when he left, the bread and the meal stayed. Think about that. Even though the risen Christ was not physically in their midst anymore, the bread which he had broken and shared was. The meal that they sat down to together remained. Today, in a little while, we're going to be sharing communion. And I think this story about these two disciples and their journey on the road to Emmaus, where they encounter Jesus, is an important communion story. Jesus goes through the same actions, takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and he shares it. And and then they recognize the risen Christ in their midst. How often are we invited to do that as we share in communion together? The bread certainly is taken and blessed and broken and shared among us. And we're invited to recognize the risen Christ in our midst. The story goes on to say that, that they didn't stay there that night they, they returned to Jerusalem. They returned to where the others were. They, they met up with their buddies and they shared their experience with, with the others. And they talked about how their hearts were burning within them. And I think this whole idea of them not staying where they were, but returning is important for us to hear as well. It's important for us after we have had up, had things in our lives happen where, where life is disrupted, where we're disoriented, where we're surprised, where we let our fear and our grief dictate our actions. I think it's important for us to recognize those things that ground us and, and return us to the places and the people that are important. We may not be returning to our physical place of worship um, anytime soon. We know that we will go through the month of May continuing to worship in this way virtually and, and um, in our own homes. But that doesn't mean that we can't continually to return to that which is important to us. We know we love our building, we love being there, we love hearing the organ, we love hearing the choir. Uh, we're sad at the possibility of, of not being there and probably not being there for a little while. We don't, we don't know how long that this is going to take. We're sad that we can't be in one another's presence. But when we encounter the resurrected one in whatever way we are whether it's on a road out in the country 
or an encounter with a stranger or the, the sweet taste of broken and blessed bread, we know that we can always return to that which is important to us, not so much in place, but in spirit and in soul and in, and in faith. One of the things that I've been doing during this time is slowing down and spending a little bit more time journaling and writing. Um, I'll pick a scripture for a day and, and hand write it out into my journal and let those words kind of, kind of seep in. And then I allow myself to start asking some questions about some of the words that I'm not really sure about, um, some of the things that I might want some clarification about, some of the things that it might draw some interest for me. And one of the questions that I started to ask myself as I walked around in the story of Emmaus was, to what is it that I want to return that is going to be most important about a life of faith in the midst of a church congregation? I invite you to explore that question as well. As we start to have conversations in our leadership about what does it mean for us to come back and, and when should we do that and when we do, what kinds of safety precautions do we need to be making? Important questions and things that, that we'll be discussing and deliberating. But even more important than that, I would want to hear from you what will be important to return to in some way, even if it's a long time before we're able to go back into our building. What elements of faith do you long to return to with your hearts burning, your souls on fire, the excitement of being able to share with others your encounter of the risen Christ and to hear theirs as well. So I invite you to let this week ahead be a week of disruption, holy disruption, a week where you allow yourself to be a little bit vulnerable to those things that are keeping you from recognizing resurrection in your midst, and a week where you think about returning. What is it? What value? What faith aspects? What rituals? What element of life and faith do you find that it will be most important to return to? Not just when we come back to the building, but return to in your life, maybe even this week. My friends, I hope that you've had an opportunity this weekend to get out and enjoy some of this beautiful weather. It is so lush and so green. Springs are always so highly valued in Montana because of the nature of our winters. So enjoy them. Find new life. Walk along a country road if you get a chance and be open to experiencing the risen Christ that might come alongside and walk with you for a while. Blessings and go in peace. Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide my shelter be, let the water and the blood from your wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure, cleanse me from its guilt and power. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill your law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. You must save and you alone. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to your cross I cling, naked come to you for 
your dress. Helpless look to you for grace. Stained I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. I am grateful for the variety of gifts um, that the, the church and the variety of gifts that have been expressed over the last couple of months through the church. Every week since March, we have supplied enough food to West Elementary to <coughs> feed what should be enough, it looks like to, to my eyes, um, groceries for three or four families each week. Um, since the schools have now announced that they will not resume on-site classes, we'll continue to support those families uh, with food. I'll be checking with the principal to keep track of how they are doing um, as the businesses open up and as people are able to return to work. So I'll just keep in touch with everybody about that. I'm touched to hear of the contacts that you have been making with one another um, and also by your financial gifts to the church, uh, which are much appreciated. Along with our on, other ongoing financial commitments, we committed early on to continue to pay all staff as budgeted, even though job responsibilities haven't been as time consuming. Your church leadership saw it as a way that we can care for our staff during this uncertain time. We may not be physically offering our gifts at this time, but we can use this time to dedicate what we have given and will give as the body of Christ. We can also use it to give thanks for the ways we have been blessed by the gifts of others. So I invite you at this time to just take a moment and hold forth those gifts and blessings in a time of dedication as Tyler offers a music offering as well.
Thank you, Tyler. As we move into a time of um, sharing communion with one another, this is also going to be our, um, our time for prayers, for, for sharing our joys and concerns. So if we think about um, that meal that Jesus shared with the disciples um, while they were in, in Emmaus, um, it revealed that that stranger in their midst was Jesus. So as we prepare to share that sacred meal, let us remember that as we care for others in prayer, Jesus is also in our midst at that time. So I'd like to invite you, if you have uh, joys and concerns that you would that you would like to share, um, if you are on Zoom, you can either unmute yourself and speak your prayer request, or you can type it into the chat, um, and you can locate that just by identifying the uh, control buttons that are on the bottom of your screen and click chat and then you can go in and type in a message there. If you are on Facebook, um, we invite you to just go ahead and add your prayer request in on the comments on the Facebook live stream. Um, just so that the Facebook people know you're sitting at about a 10 second delay for us. So if I don't quite get to your prayer request, um, God will. So we're seeing some prayer requests pop up um, from Denise Jackson. Her, Debbie's Aunt Aubrey has died from Corona. So prayers for Debbie and her family. They live in New York City. And from um, Hank and Sarah, uh, prayers from Hank uh, for his friend Gary Edwards on the loss of his father. My cousin Jane, actually my mother's cousin Jane, is married to a Larry, uh, which is kind of weird because I have a Larry. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, had a heart transplant several years ago um, and uh, was doing fine, but he had developed cancer. Um, they've got him on chemo just to prolong his life, but uh, it is it's going to be hard for them. They are on the um, East Coast in, in the Carolinas. Um, uh, Jane and Larry are both doctors uh, in their 70s. And uh, they have uh, two, two daughters and many grandchildren. And it's going to be really difficult for them um, to lose their Larry. Um, so I, I would ask if you guys could all send them a lot of prayers. Okay, for Jane Sure. Um, Fagenstrom's Kim and Linda are celebrating 40 years of wedded bliss oh. today. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. We need to find a way to send up, you know, fireworks over, over Zoom. Congratulations. Um, from Dana, uh, prayers for Joel, Joel Corda, who is in benefits with an infection in his leg. Um, from DJ, thank you for the prayers from church family as he traveled to Eastern Montana for his uncle's funeral this week. It was beautiful to how he touched so many lives with strong faith. So, um, welcome, welcome back, Dean. Lynn, as I was uh, looking through my news feeds this morning, I'm reminded that 50 years ago this weekend, Kent State happened. Uh, so prayers to all people that were affected by that tragedy and other tragedies that occur in life, uh, such as the protests of the openings. Uh, but I was struck with the idea that Kent State, I remember very, very well the events that occurred then. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, from Kelly Quick, prayers for grads who cannot have commencement, and that's grads of, of all levels. Um, from Dana, celebration of healing for her friend Sue, Mary Sue in New York City is recovering from coronavirus and has been able to and has been able to get out of her apartment. Lynn, 
then one more, more. My daughter actually has been scheduled for surgery on May 29th. Um, it's, it's exploratory surgery to see what they can do for her pain uh, in her uterus. So um, I, I forgot to mention that. And, and that surgery is actually rescheduled. She was scheduled for that earlier. And then that's when um, COVID kind of shut everything down. So for Kessa, she prepares to have surgery um, for this month. Yeah, she's so little and, and everything. It's kind of really scary. So, but I'm very proud of her. So thank you. Lynn, I'm also thankful for everyone that is here that we have the opportunity to gather in our homes and celebrate not only communion, but fellowship. And for you, for your leadership each week, we are so blessed. And I speak as a member of Christ United Methodist Church who also claims First Congregational Church. So I just wanted to say thank you for all of us gathered here today. Thank you, Dana. It's, it's certainly my pleasure and it's so great to have, um, have, have our sisters and brothers from Christ United Methodist with us and prayers for Pastor Dawn as she is beginning to make the transition from Columbia Falls to Great Falls. Um, uh, from, from Liz, uh, your technology chops, or is that supposed to be rocks? I'm not no, sure. No, no, it's chops. Chops, okay. Um, <laughs> um, and, and Shannon, it's good to see Shannon back, to, back today. Um, so welcome, welcome everybody. Let's be together in the spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we gather in unique ways and ways that we can to be a community of faith. And when we do, and we bring forth the name of Jesus, lo and behold, we discover that he is indeed in our midst. And so be with us in the prayers that we lift up this day. Be with those who have lost loved ones and struggle with finding ways to celebrate those lives and to continue to be safe and healthy. We rejoice for healing that happens. We rejoice for life celebrations in our midst, giving thanks for the love and commitment of the Fagenstroms as they celebrate 40 years together. We give thanks this day, O oh God, for your church as it gathers together in unique ways to not only be a source of strength and faith for us, but to be the body of Christ in the world to reach out where there is need, to give hope, to give courage, to be a sanctuary, to be a voice of encouragement. We do this today, O oh God, as always, in, in the name of the one who is among us mm -hmm. always and who teaches us to pray together. Our Father, who Lord art in God, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we also remember as we gather um, how Jesus, not only at the night before his arrest and uh, betrayal, uh, but at that time in Emmaus with the disciples, when, when they gathered for a meal together, um, and he took the bread, and, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he shared it with them, saying, take and eat, this is my body, it's broken for you. And then after supper, he took the cup, the common cup, and after giving thanks and asked for a blessing, he gave it to them, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood. Take and drink of it, all of you, and when you do, do so in remembrance of me. 
So we do as Jesus did, rejoicing that Christ is in our midst as we take the bread and break it and share it and eat it and we take the cup of the new covenant. So I invite you to take and eat and take and drink. you to be with me in prayer. God, we thank you for the many ways you are present in our midst, in fellowship, prayer, worship, song, silence, and in the breaking of the bread and the pouring out of the cup. Send us now into life rejoicing in the goodness you bring, the comfort you offer, the hope you instill, the peace you give. In the name of Christ, we rejoice and we pray. Amen. So now, my friends, go forth into the world, continue the journey, recognize the risen one in your midst. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.